Bonsoir guys. Well, it's time for me to put me <laughs> So for a while now I've had a sneaking suspicion that slow is smooth and smooth is fast and I've been not quite beating the drum but certainly in the back of my mind uh, I've, I've made it I've mentioned on a couple of videos that I think it's the right way to go especially if you're just starting out so I've got the perfect opportunity with a friend at the moment who is has expressed an interest in coming having a go at racing minis so that gives me a brilliant excuse to put together what I think should have been my first Mardave Mini or Camtech Mini or a general guide for anybody that is wanting to get into this. I definitely try to go too fast too soon and just spend all my time either upside down or in a barrier. So with three years experience what would I do differently having this knowledge to start all over again? So clearly the Camtech or Mar Dave debate will always rage on and there will be people who really cheer for Mar Dave and people who really cheer for Camtech and they both kind of have the pros and cons. I've kind of settled over into the Mar Dave camp therefore I've got quite a few spurs and bits to build another car and here is said other car. Now the premise for this is to try to go as basic as I possibly can and to enforce the fact that I will slow somebody down rather than trying to rely on technology and tweaking expos or turning the throttle rate down which all you can do but human nature means we will always try to increase it that little bit and I think if you cannot physically make the car go any quicker you will do your best to drive it to its full potential. Don't crash hit good lines, start learning good racing etiquette, drifting wide through corners, letting faster lads come through, so that you build up some good racing experience and etiquette to make you a faster and a bet ultimately a better racer. Well, that's the theory. So with that in mind, we are running a Mardave Mini Assassin. We are running the GRP. I had a couple of little carbon fibre blingy bits, but they were just left over in a box. No performance upgrade, really. Um, the important bit, in my opinion, is I'm running a Core 27 motor. Now, my my little lad with his Mar Dave, he actually runs a Core 35, and until he can do at least five or six laps without crashing, there's no way I'm even going to think about putting one of these in, motors in for him. He just needs to go around clean, and that that is my theory. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Let's run through though the basic setup on this car. So we'll start at the very front. We're going for a nice big DDR racing um, foam bumper. The reason I'm going for this is basically car protection and depending what club you race at this might be mandatory so you might have to have some sort of collapsible bumper on. Now there is a really cool honeycomb bumper that Mar Dave do and I'm sure there's other aftermarket 3D printers like DDR now supply one but to be perfectly honest this is what I had lying around in the box so let's go with that. On the front tyres we're running uh, contact 50s and we've pay, paid particular attention to making sure the glue on the on the rim is nice and smooth and tidy all the way around and I've also glued the inside of the tyre as well. So still sticking with the front end I've gone again for DDR Racing 3D printed shims. I think it's a 4mm um, front and 1.5 at the back. Now that also helps with ride height but one of the most important things here is the higher that angle is there at the front that's your caster angle the steeper that is the more relaxed the car is to drive the more you flatten or reduce that angle or have it flat even if it's lifted up or down the flatter that angle the more aggressive the turning the more aggressive the steering and for a first time you just don't need all that steering on this just concentrate on going around the track without hitting the sides We've got on the inside of each wheel here um, two 0.5 mil washers and the reason that they're there again to aid with getting a reasonable ride height but because we're not truing these tyres down at all we're just running them out of the box as the tyre wears down because you don't want to be buying 15 sets of tyres straight away 
as these tyres wear down, your ride height will reduce. And sometimes that can mean that you're catching just at the front, usually denoted, to be honest, you can see that on the GRP chassis there. I haven't cleaned it from when I raced it last and it's just catching at the front. So potentially I'd be removing, as, as your wheel ride height reduces, as the form decreases, because you're going round, uh, I can take a shim out and that lifts lifts the ride height again by 0 0.5 of a mil. So that's just a quick, cheap and easy way of, of sorting your ride height. Still staying at the front end. However, I've got to turn the car this way. Under the steering arm here, I've also got two, I think one mil washers. And the reason for that is to lift the steering arms. So they aren't from this, from the servo saver here that they're attached to, to here. I'm trying to flatten that angle so that the steering arm is as flat as possible. I'm not sure why I got told by other better racers that that is the thing to do. So that's what I do. Um, I'm running a Mardev Ultra Circuit HR3 um, ESC, which I found is brilliant. And what I really like about this is you can switch reverse on and off. So a lot of the tracks I race at, you're not allowed to reverse at all. So to take the temptation away from a new driver, just switch it off. And that way you can't, and also you can't reverse, which also then encourages you not to crash as much. Servo wise, I'm running a Futaba S, SU300. Um, and I'm not running a power cap with it because I haven't noticed the need. So now we move on to the back of the car. Obviously, we're running that Core 27. We've paired that with uh, some Contact 40s. I do have a set of Contact um, 37s just in case there weren't enough grip. But to be perfectly honest, it's not it's not spinning the wheels up. It's driving really well, the car. So it doesn't, it's not trying to light the tires up. I'm not scrambling and searching for grip. The back end isn't twitchy under, under acceleration. It's, it's nice and planted and smooth, which is good. That's encouraging. I've got a 17 tooth pinion, but I may drop that down to a 16 tooth when, when my mate has his first go with it. And I've got that running a 50 tooth spur with the rear pod. I don't know if you'll be able to see, so I've took a picture. Uh, I've got a, a good one mil washer spacer underneath the ball joint there. Again, that relaxes the car as opposed to the flatter it is, the more rotation you get on corners, but you don't need to worry about that. Just put a spacer underneath and just drive it. Then to get onto the rear pod, there's loads of little tweaks and things you can do. Now, the only... Um, this is a completely old bog standard Mardave pod. So there's no side spring adjustment. There is no droop screw adjustment. Um, and it's not a double stacked um, damper at the back either. This is the kind of updated, all fancy, all cool looking side spring pod with the single droop screw double stack damper i'm probably describing all this wrong but you know what i mean here by the double stack this this piece here you can get two damper springs in there or washers i should say as opposed to just the one none of that that's that allowed so the only thing you need to adjust and tweak on this is your two nuts there to achieve your ride height that's it now later on uh, after another race we may look at the um the tweak that you can do because to be honest i'm not 100 percent a fay on that so i don't really understand it myself but that is your completely bog standard oh and it's married to an etronics pulse which you know is your bog standard 25 quid um receipt um radio gear so again nothing fancy nothing dramatic so the proof in the pudding is how did it get on <laughs> well inside mark There were three heats running at Ignition on Thursday and I specifically took this and ran this. Now, two things happened. One, I really enjoyed myself because I wasn't I wasn't trying to get run for performance or I wasn't trying to think, 
all my, my, my carb and all singing, all dancing, my Dave there. It justifies me to try that bit harder and I should be doing better. So although I love racing it and I'm really competitive with it, with it now and my, my driving has really improved to the point where I might be nudging into the A's every now and again with the minis. It cannot it detracts sometimes from what I really love and remember about starting this hobby, which is all the fun and the banter and the camaraderie. And there was plenty of that because of the 27 turn motor. I didn't expect to do very well. I expected to be in the C final. I expected to be in last place. I didn't expect to beat anybody. So it really made me relax and chill out and enjoy, enjoy the day, which was, again, as a new driver, if you're putting the same motor in as you know the A lads, your expectation level naturally comes up. Well, I had no expectation because I didn't I didn't think I'd go as quick as them. So that that is really a good point to emphasise. Don't if if you build a, a Mar Dave and you want to go racing, don't put don't put expectations on yourself that you think you have to live up to. Just just go around the track, just get track timing. Anyway, back to me because um, it's all about me the car did really really well i drove very much within myself and for the first two qualifiers no crashes no snafus and we did i think 27 laps and then the next one was 26 laps so i dropped a lap but i knew where i was dropping that time because i was forever moving out of the way of about three or four lads that were a lot quicker than me and a couple of times i misjudged where to move out of the way so it lost me a lot of time in getting out of the way and there's the inevitable little hiccup and uh, burying yourself into a wall although the nice thing about this now is when i bury myself into a wall the speed i'm going is i'm not going to break anything <laughs> so that's good i then sat down next to my the guy who I was pitting with and he mentioned why don't we flip the motor around because he heard me quickly run it in reverse on the table and he went that that sounds quicker going backwards so we flipped the motor around and then we did 30 laps for Q3. 30 laps, that's ridiculous. I have a 27 turn motor and that put me in last place for the B final. Let's see how we get on. Right, so here we go. Project 27 turn for its maiden race. As I say, qualifying's gone much better than I thought it would. Especially once we uh, swap the polarity of the 27 turn motor. And... Uh, yeah, it certainly found a little bit more speed, which is not necessarily what I was looking for, but the car, the way the basic setup is, it's handled it really well, and it's put me, so it's put me in fifth place for the B final. So definitely a surprise, wasn't expecting to be there, and I'm certainly not expecting to be anything other than in last place for this. And we're certainly up against some really fast cars within this group. Alfie Lee on pole and Aaron's car is blisteringly <laughs> fast. So let's see how we get on. And the legend that is in Howard, the, le the legend that is Howard, he's uh, he's mid table here as well tonight. So let's see how we get on. We're off. First corner, not so bad. Yep, predictably I'm in last place, but they're not just scarpering off from me. See how we got on on the straight, yeah. You can really tell the difference in the cars on the straight, but not really that much in it through the corners. I'm able to carry a lot of corner speed. Oh, Alfie's had a mistake, so that's one place, that's fourth. Oh, and them two have had a mistake, so would you believe I'm in second place? <laughs> he who is last shall be first. Get on now. Some frantic marshalling going on. Which is As I say, the car. 40s on the rear, 50s on the front. Not true down and running a basic pod. And it, you know, not perfect handling with the handset. You, you do miss some of the little, the little detail adjustments you can make with some of the posher handsets. But yeah, it's running fine. Flipping heck. Mark there. Coming up to lap, lapping, but he won't have none of that. 
It's definitely scuppered my race a little bit there. See how we get on. Six minutes is a long time. But the blistering pace there from Aaron. Is that a battle for position, Dean, or is him. Aaron lapping me? Will he pick his moment? Nope, push me a little bit and then... Oh, he's gone wide. Right. So I'm back up Stand the inside. Up, I think Spider-Man says it best. With great power comes great responsibility, Aaron. Oh, what was that, dude? No prisoner, Aaron, that's what we call him. Oh, that's brilliant. I don't know how you managed to do that. I think we'll see that again in slow-mo replay. So I'm not 100%... Oh, and Aaron's been took off now, so he's... Clearly damaged his car somewhat. Well, to, Alfie then. Lee there, wow. trying to move out of the way for Howard and Alfie Lee. They're definitely quicker than me, much better drivers with this car, so stay out of the way. Oh, Howard's had a snafu. He's in the wall. And I think this is Mark now trying to unlap himself. Or, no, no, we'll be uh, fighting for position now, won't we? It's all going on. Aaron's car still down. I think Howard's in the lead. Alfie Lee second, or him. Alfie Lee might be in the lead now. So this is the position, the battle on track for third place. Mark decided to snafu himself into a wall. So slow is steady. Steady away, Brandon. As I say, weren't really taking it that seriously. So it's. That encouraging to see that the car was that consistent. Yeah, around the corners nicely. There you go. Front, I don't know. Are you sure? Oh, a steward's inquiry. Whoa! Aaron's coming was on. Aaron fast. doing 300 mile an hour? He's going to close, close me down quickly now. Oh, Mark. So that's a full lap I think I've put on you there. Oh, wait until I tell Jacob the humiliation of the 27. <laughs> oh, holding them off. They might be quicker than me, but they, they're not cornering as well. Oh, Aaron makes great strides in catching me there. But can he pass me cleanly? This is the big question. And he's three laps down. Oh, he backed off there. Howard's having a nightmare. Back in the wall again. Ooh. Howard ha oh, and I span round there. I've let... No, I haven't let anybody through. That weren't a reverse. Nobody saw that. So I've, I think I've, I've kept my third place there. Let's see what Mark, Mark does here. Inside, Mark. Oh. Oh, what was that? Come on, Dean, quick. <laughs> I don't know. I've no idea where I am. I think Howard's going to lap me down the inside, please, Howard. Well, that wasn't very good, was it? Must be coming up to the end of the race almost now. Not long left. Go on, Alfie. Alfie Lee, you go through there. Nice and easy, buddy. Rocking a new shell. If anybody follows Ignition, there's some pictures of it. Um, Handsome Rob's made him a, a, done him a new shell, which looks amazing. So Mark's definitely hunting me down now. So now we're at... Yeah. So we're definitely fighting for position now. Is that a battle for position, Dean, me and Mark? Uh, yeah. My question is, can I hold him off? The widest mini in the world now, Mark. Yeah, apart, apart from the... <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. Apparently I can't hold him off. <laughs> and that's it. Race is over. By the tiniest of margins. I can't believe that. He did me on the last corner. Do you know? Talk about the curse at the uh, commentator's curse. Anyway, right. Top night. Good laughs. It's a fourth place in the B final.
Can't believe it. Fourth place with a 27 turn motor. And I only missed out on third place by the smallest of margins. Mark, so close. So close. And Aaron, well, all I can do is shake my head. Oh. You're like Dean. Shocking. <laughs> but that, I don't know if you heard all the laughter and stuff. I genuinely had a good time racing this. It was... It was a really, really good night and I sort of reconnected with, with the love of it all because you can, you know, between me getting carried away and buying a tyre truer and then washing motors and trying to make sure your batteries are at the right ampage at all the time and charge properly and discharge properly and then have you sprayed your motor with WD-40? Have you done this? Have you done that? Have you, have you, have you cleaned your tyres in between with, um, with crap like this? You know, have you done all that? It, it it detracts all that time that you get to wander about and just have a laugh with people and say what are you doing and what are you doing and what are you doing so yeah i really had a good night and the car went a lot better than it should have done but as you could see it was very much driving within itself it didn't look like it wanted to roll over it wasn't trying to grip roll it wasn't understeering it wasn't overpowered yeah really happy with how it's gone and i guess this really does prove that slow is smooth smooth is fast anyway guys thank you as always for tuning in please stick some likes and some comments and a couple of thumbs up and bits and bobs in the comments below and i'll see you all soon toodle pip